interesting uh, orientation session. Uh, let's see. Yes, my name is Daniel Sender, and I uh, welcome you to this session. I am an associate professor of violin, and I also serve as concertmaster of the Charlottesville Symphony. Uh, I coach chamber music and teach violin lessons, among other things. And also, I direct the performance concentration seminar, which we'll be talking about a little later. So today, just as a brief overview, we're gonna cover a lot. We're gonna cover basically everything we do in Old Cabell Hall, uh, including ensembles, private lessons. We're gonna talk about the major, and then there'll be plenty of opportunity at the end of the session for a question and answer. So as we're going through, please do uh, populate using the Q&A or chat, populate that with any questions you have, and we'll either address it right in the chat or one of us on the panel will, will address it live, okay? So I would, we're gonna start by introducing the people that you will be hearing from. We're gonna start with Elliot Tackett. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Dr. Elliot Tackett, and I am the new director of bands here at UVA, and it's a pleasure to spend some time with you today. John. I guess I'm next. Sorry, I'm waiting for somebody to say John. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm John Durth. I am the director of jazz performance and run the jazz ensemble, teach jazz improv and private lessons in trumpet and other instruments for improv and composition. Hi, everyone. I'm Yijen Fang. I'm the associate uh, professor and principal percussionist of the Charlottesville Symphony. I'm also the director of the New Music Ensemble and Percussion Ensemble. I also help coaching the front ensemble of the Cavalier Marching Band and also the Wing Ensemble Percussion Section. Hey everyone, my name's Lauren. I am a rising fourth year student double majoring in music and chemistry, and I'm originally from Connecticut. I play violin and viola, so I'm in the Charlottesville Symphony as a violinist. I play chamber um, music on viola and I take violin lessons. I'm also in the DMP program, which we'll cover um, in the next couple of slides. Um, and I also work for the department as a promotions assistant and a desk supervisor, and I work for the music library as well. Hi, I'm Olivia. I'm also a chemistry and music double major and then a statistics minor. I'll be a third year this year. Um, I'm from Florida. I've been a part of the Cavalier Marching Band, Percussion Ensemble, Private Lessons. I volunteered for the department and I've worked as a promotions assistant like Lauren also. Hi everyone, my name is Julia Ruth Preston. I'm a rising fourth year studying history and music, not chemistry and music, um, and religious studies is my minor. And I've been an active member of the University Singers, which is a choir since my first year, first semester and chamber singers for going on three semesters now. And I also do some service um, through Madison House uh, in a musical way. Great, thank you. So we're gonna start off with an overview of uh, our music major. So uh, if you're on this, this session, you're, you may be curious about what it might mean to add a, a music major or to declare the major. You should know that uh, this major is, is uh, it's, I wanna say it's unique. There may be some that are like it a little bit, but our offering is, is really very robust and allows for you to specialize in really what interests you within the broader music field. So a music major doesn't mean it has to be performance, for example, right? So you could, you could primarily be interested in history or ethnomusicology, composition, rap. And we have uh, the, course, the courses and the faculty to support you in those pathways. As I say pathways because we are, as a faculty, now considering how to formalize this strategy of allowing people to specialize within music in areas that they're interested in. So if you take a look at the slide, the music major is 31 credits. And as you're shopping for majors and looking at the different credit loads, you'll notice that 31 credits is, is very intentionally uh, light, which means that it can pair well with even the most strenuous, buddy, we're in the middle of a, a live thing, pal. Dad, I couldn't find um, mom. Sorry, guys, that's my son. Gabriel, thank you. Um, sorry about that. So basically it can pair with even the most strenuous majors like chemistry you're hearing from, you can double major and even add a minor on top of that. 
Uh, and if you notice on the slide, it says you can specialize through electives. What we're able to jam into our old Cabell Hall in terms of course offerings and ensemble offerings is remarkable. And I'm excited for you to hear more about those in just a minute. If we could advance to the next slide for a moment, I wanna to talk to you about a couple of things. And that's that at the music department, you can participate in almost every aspect of what we offer without being a music major, almost everything. There are two exceptions and those are on this page. So the distinguished major program, uh, which you'll notice in the title, you kind of have to be a major to be a distinguished major, right? So what that is, it's a, it's a, it's a program that's university wide and it's a way of setting yourself apart uh, through a formal project. And so if you're a performer, that distinguished major in the last, in the last year of study would most likely be a full recital produced in Old Cabell Hall, which if you, if you can see Ijen Fong's background, that is Old Cabell Hall. So you'd be standing on that stage, uh, but it doesn't have to be a recital. So if you notice, it could be a different, if it'd be a different kind of performance, it could be a written uh, project, it could be a composition project. So it's really up to you to be creative in that last year in crafting a distinguished major project. That is a credential that gets added to your diploma, by the way, uh, the distinguished major. The performance concentration is the only other thing that requires you to declare a major. So performance concentration is a two-year program, unlike the distinguished major program, which is just a one-year program in the final year. Performance concentration is two years and you apply for it at the second semester of your sophomore year or second year. And basically what that is, is it, it's a cohort of instrumentalists and singers of a variety of backgrounds. So we, in some years have had percussionists and cellists and pianists and singers all in the same class. And it forms a, a cohort uh, that meets in the hall for these advanced seminar sessions. And you get coaching by guest coaches uh, that may or may not perform on the same instrument that you do. So for example, last year, John Durth came in and coached uh, a bunch of string players and it was fantastic to hear a jazz perspective on a classical Bach, for example. So the concentration is selective. It, there are only five, uh, sometimes six people a year selected for that program. But what it does is prepares people uh, who have a real interest and love of performance, prepares them to be able to do a really stellar program in their fourth year and uh, would also equip them if they wanted to, for example, pursue a master's in music beyond UVA. So those are the two things that are kind of gatewayed by uh, the declaring the major. Everything else you're gonna hear about today is available and we actually solicit non-majors and majors alike to participate in everything we do here. So the final part of this slide is the Miller Art Scholars and I would love for Lauren to talk about that program a little bit. Yeah, so the Miller Art Scholars is one of the scholarship programs that UVA has. If you've heard about like Eccles Scholars, this is a similar program to that, um, where you can apply in your first or second year. Um, and basically the Art Scholars is a collective of art students from across UVA, not just music students. We also have drama, dance, theater, film, um, so many diverse um, students from all different arts backgrounds. So this is a really great way to meet other student artists who you might not meet like just in your music classes. Um, it's, it's really a organization that encourages interdisciplinary collaboration among students at UVA. Um, it also gives you a great introduction to what careers in the arts are like. You get um, to interact with and hear from a lot of speakers from around Virginia and the greater United States and even the world. Um, so it's a great opportunity for networking, resume building, um, getting experience writing grants, all of that. Um, it comes along with being an art scholar. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, I'd really encourage you to um, apply or go on the Art Scholars website and learn a little bit more about um, what that scholarship program's like. Great, we're gonna move now uh, to talk about all of the things that we offer with ensembles, both large and small. So Ejen, would you lead us off uh, talking about, among other things, the Charlottesville Symphony? 
Yeah, so our ensembles are open to everyone and you don't need to be a music major to participate. We also welcome community members as well. And for the sizes, we have as large as a Cavalier marching band, like 350 members, or we have as small as just a duet, a wooing duet or violin duet. Um, and we have different genre as early as Baroque period to as modern as new music ensemble or mobile interactive computer ensemble mice. Um, and you can be an instrumentalist or vocalist. You can find home here because for vocalists and instrumentalists, you can participate in the jazz ensemble or new music ensemble. And vocalists, you have the universe singer and chamber singer. If you are wing and brass or percussion, you have the marching band wing ensemble, percussionists, you have the percussion ensemble, or you have the wing chamber groups, and any sort of a combination between the wing or brass ensemble. And string player, you have the, your string chamber groups, or like a piano trio, or piano quintet, and you also can join the Shaw's Symphony. And speaking of Shaw's Symphony, we have a very unique hybrid structure the orchestra consists of faculty, students, and community members. Each principal in the section serves on faculty here at UVA. Students get to practice and perform side by side with your professors. And the symphony is also sponsored by a nonprofit community organization, the Charles of Symphony Society, to support the function of the symphony. And we can have John talk about the jazz program. Thank you, Eugen. That's great. Yeah, well, the jazz program at UVA um, comprises a number of different groups, the jazz ensemble, which is a big band. And we are in some ways a traditional big band. We play the repertoire all the way back to the beginning of jazz. We play a lot of Duke Ellington and Count Basie. But we also write our own music. And uh, through the pandemic, we made recordings with the jazz groups because we weren't able to meet in Old Cabell Hall. So we isolated in a recording studio off grounds, uh, rhythm section played, masked in a room together, and then horn players could come in three at a time and singers three at a time in isolation. We have the, um, the big band, we have four small groups, jazz chamber groups, and uh, we have also a vocal group, which we are now calling the University Jazz Singers. And that is a student run group that's affiliated with the jazz ensemble and the jazz program and does concerts with us, but they also do their own concerts and develop their own fan base and repertoire. So it's a combination of a student run and a, a faculty group. Again, what Ejen was saying about the uniqueness of the, the ensembles is that they, the ensembles will welcome um, anyone into them and certainly community members too. So it's an amazing opportunity to interact with people from the community as well. And uh, we can go more into it later if people have specific questions. Thank you. Thanks, John. Uh, Elliot, could you talk about the band? It would be my pleasure. Um, so the UVA band program has several ensembles, uh, both concert ensembles as well as uh, traditional marching ensembles that are available for students from all majors. Um, so the first thing I'll do is mention the Cavalier Marching Band. Ejen uh, mentioned that we have somewhere between 300 and 350 students um, historically each year. And we are on track to hit that number again this year. Um, if you participate in the Marching Band, you, you would be looking to perform for about 60,000 people per game, seven home games a year, seven halftime shows. Also during the fall semester is an auditioned concert ensemble uh, that meets once a week uh, for just a little over two hours called the Wind Ensemble. And um, that meets in Hunter Smith Band Building. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. In the spring, uh, the marching band does not meet. However, we do have a basketball band um, that services men's and women's basketball team uh, games. Uh, we also have the Wind Ensemble that continues uh, into the spring semester 
and then we add an additional concert band ensemble that is not auditioned. So if you uh, know, for instance, that you aren't looking for um, an auditioned experience, but you just really want to be part of a concert band experience, you can sign up for concert band and immediately get in. Um, there may be some sort of seating audition to make sure that we have you in the right place so that you can be successful. But that group meets primarily in the spring. Both the wind ensemble and the concert band currently have one concert per semester. Great, thank you so much, Elliot. And then Julia, would you please talk about our choral groups? Yes. So um, as I said, I'm a member of the University Singers, which in my biased opinion is an incredible choral group. Um, we're roughly 96 singers, give or take, um, depending on the semester. And we've served the Charlottesville community and beyond for many years now. Um, we sing at many of the UVA official events, including the upcoming convocation. So we'll see you there. Um, basketball games, we sang at the inauguration of President Ryan, things like that. Um, we have multiple concerts per semester, including our annual family holiday and family weekend concerts. Those always draw really big crowds. Um, and we also collaborate with the Charlottesville Symphony Orchestra very frequently, um, putting on a variety of large scale performances in Old Cabell Hall um, and other venues around town. Um, in terms of repertoire, we've tackled everything, Bernstein's Mass, uh, Box Mass and B Minor, if you're familiar with these, St. John's Passion, Handel's Messiah, you name it, we've probably done it. Um, and we've also done uh, premieres of commission works by Stephen Paulus, Forrest Pierce, Judith Chayton, Eric Whitaker. Um, we have a really expansive repertoire, which is one of my favorite things about the group. So there's a lot of room for growth, no matter your singing background. Um, and then every now and again, we get to go on domestic or international concert tours. Most recently in the summer of 2019, we went up the East Coast of the United States to Canada. Um, I got to go on that, it was a wonderful experience. Um, and then social aspect is a really big part of the group, but I'll talk about that um, later. And each of the groups count for academic credit. So they are two music credits each um, every semester. The U Singers rehearse on Mondays and Wednesdays from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. And then Chamber Singers rehearse on Fridays from 1 to 3.15 p.m. Chamber Singers is a smaller subsect of the University Singers, um, about 20 to 25 singers who just does repertoire for smaller groups and does smaller gigs because they're easier to move than 90 singers. <laughs> um, so you'll hear about auditions in a little bit, but we already have times up. So if you're raring to sign up, just give us a Google and you'll be able to. Um, thank you so much. Thanks, Julia. That was great. So uh, it's important to note if you're if you're looking at the slide, just look over that list. It's it is pretty amazing that all those things can be offered in one department. Uh, and when I say offered, I mean you get credit for each and every one of those academic credit. Now that as, as remarkable as, as that is, music doesn't just happen in Old Cabell. So that's, that's just the things that you can get credit for through the department. There are also, um, it seems, innumerable acapella groups and, and smaller groups that are happening and meeting outside of the department that you are still welcome to, to check out. There's, um, there's a you know, Kinetic Sound, Radio Music Society, First Year Players, there are lots of student run groups. Uh, some of which don't require auditions. Uh, those don't, you don't get credit for them. Uh, but I just wanted you to know that there's even beyond this extensive list, there's more music out there at UVA. So if we can go now to the next page, I'm going to ask uh, Ejen again to introduce private lessons at the university. As you can see on the top, these are all the instrument, instrumental um, or voice private lessons that you can take. And um, you just, we offer 2,000, 3,000, and 4,000 level. When you first start taking lesson, you always start with 2,000 level. And then once you have studied with the professor for a semester, then you are eligible to audition for a 3,000 level. So 2,000 level, you only has credit or no credit. So there's no grade. But starting from 3,000 level, then you will actually get a grade for your lesson. Um, and we offer half hour lesson or hour lessons. So you can discuss your options with your professor. And the best way to register for lesson is to contact the professor. And you can find you know, the faculty contact information on our music department website under the faculty session. Yeah. So you, the faculty get to know like your level and 
uh, just get to know you more and we love to know get to know our students um, and also some of the instrument actually have actually have auditions for example piano because there are a lot of people want to take piano lessons and they have many different levels so they do have a piano audition for private lessons um, I, I wonder if anybody want to add anything if I miss anything yeah if if uh, one of the students would like to talk for a moment about the student perspective on lessons that'd be great yeah, um, I could start and then maybe like Lauren could add something, but I really love kind of how Ejen was saying, um, just all the different levels of lessons that UVA offers. Like it's not just no lessons or like super intense lessons. Like I've taken the half credit lessons. It's a really good way to just practice an instrument I like, but not be too stressed about it. Um, and also just all the lesson faculty are amazing. I love being around them. Yeah, to add on to that, uh, I mean, you can probably tell by some of the pictures on this slide, but being taking lessons kind of gives you your own little small community of people who are in a similar class as you. So for example, I'm in Professor Sanders Violin Studio and our studio is actually really, really close. We do a lot of um, activities outside of music related things. We always try and get together um, and just spend time together because it's such a great way to meet like so many interesting people um, and who are now some of my closest friends. Um, and it also makes lessons a little bit less like competitive or stressful and it, it makes them more fun. And, you know, you have a supportive community that you can go to to listen to a piece you're working on, for example, or, you know, help you prep for an audition or a performance. And instead of being like really critical, I found that it's really supportive um, and it's helped me as a musician. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, that's wonderful. So let's move uh, to the next slide. And uh, this is, you know, a blast slide about all of our interest forms and audition information. And all of this will be at the end as well. Uh, and all of it can be found on the music department website. But uh, it's just important to know that if you want to audition for one of the large ensembles, there are, uh, for the symphony, for example, there are audition requirements that you might want to start uh, working on now. So the excerpts, for example, and solo music that you have to prepare. A lot of those auditions uh, take place the first week of school. And uh, Elliot, do you want to just say very briefly uh, for the Cavalier Marching Band, the, the audition process? Thanks for the opportunity. Um, so if you scan this QR code, um, it should take you, actually this is uh, for interest, but the audition process um, for us really revolves around you going to our website, the Cavalier Marching Band website. As an incoming member, um, there's an area at the top where you can click and it will take you to a new page. Uh, if you look on the right side, you're looking for audition information. If you, if you search for that audition information, it will take you to PDFs, of music as well as a recording uh, for you to download and then also um, record along to uh, this the specific audio track with the music that's available for your instrument um, and you'll upload that recording um, with the form that's available on our website. Now we are in the last week uh, prior to auditions being due they are due on the 31st however um, if you're just finding out about this information right now and you need a couple of days to kind of get yourself composed, that's fine. Feel free to email me. I'll drop my email in the chat just so I know uh, that you may have a late audition that's coming in. Great. Thanks, Elliot. So yeah, if you are interested in auditioning for any of these things, uh, the time is now. It, it's amazing. The summer is winding. <laughs> it's winding down already. So I would I would hop on today or tomorrow to see if the uh, the group that you're interested in has auditions and what that process is like. All of that can be found at music.virginia.edu/auditions. Thank you. So we're going to move on now. Uh, and could I say one thing about oh, the yeah. jazz audition, just real quick, because it's different than these other auditions. Uh, if you're jazz, if you're interested in playing jazz at UVA, the place to go is room B18 of Old Cabell Hall at 730 on the first Thursday of classes, if you can come to that. 
and that will allow you to sign up and say something about your schedule if you're interested in a small group there are four small groups and they they uh meet through the week and we'll get everybody signed up and we do a big jam session there everybody gets to play and we take notes on everybody and then we do various callbacks and put together various groups we try to get everybody playing who wants to play some jazz at uva the the jazz ensemble probably being the most competitive group to get into thanks yeah thank you john Great. So we're going to move now into to talk. Yeah, John, actually, if you want to stay on, just sure. an overview of our music faculty. Thank you. Well, I would say um, I am uh, uniquely suited to talk about the music faculty because I am proud to say that I was first hired by the students here long, long ago when the Jazz Ensemble was a student run organization. And I've been here for a very long time and learned a lot about this department by coming in really in that way. This is an incredibly diverse music faculty that basically has a performance side and an academic side. The academic part of our music department is actually looked at worldwide really as an, as an innovator and an iconoclast in music education about 15 years ago. They completely revamped the major, the approach to musicology, the interest in world music and not just being Eurocentric in music, as people like to sometimes say, the West and the rest, uh, trying to really deal with um, the truth of America with all of its um, you know, racial ambiguity and problems, all the music that came out of that. We have scholars in every part of that. I'm just looking at some of the folks up here, uh, Professor Bonnie Gordon on the top left there, world-renowned author and um, scholar on feminist studies, um, Jefferson's music, and she's an expert on uh, 16th century opera. I'm looking at, um, we, we, I'm looking at Matthew Bertner here, a composition person at school who's won awards for his incredible uh, computer-generated music. I see Ben Rouse, the conductor of our orchestra. One thing that we could say here about music making at UVA is there's a real, trend to be ecumenical and I know that the orchestra has invited me to perform with them and to write music for the orchestra from a jazz perspective. The marching band has included um, musicians from around the department doing all kinds of different things. Um, it's hard for me to, to say enough about um, the level of scholarship, the level of um, publishing, and the importance of our, you know, scholarly uh, faculty. But you, if you major in music here, you will get such a different perspective on the history of world music and how it all comes together now in a new study and a new interest in equity and um, social responsibility. So I would say that. A.D. Carson, we should talk about him. He has the Rap Lab. This is a new thing at UVA that has taken off hugely. And of course, you know, jazz music, which I represent is black music. It's American music and it's invented and created by black people in this country through the blues. A.D. Carson's dealing with the current manifestation of that music and how it relates to everything and influences everything and is influenced by everything. We're very interested in this um, sort of synth synthesizing of disciplines and what the different disciplines and different genres of music have to offer each other. Thanks. Thank you, John. Yeah. Wonderful. So we're going to move now to actually just a brief overview of the places that you'll encounter in music. So the first up is, uh, I think it's Old Cabell Hall. So if you, I hope you all have had the opportunity to, to visit grounds. And if you haven't, there's a lovely little picture, the one with the balloons there, that's looking down the, the lawn from the rotunda. And that, that building in the center is Old Cabell Hall. It's a, it's a beautiful old building. And the, the star of Old Cabell is the auditorium, which is uh, featured at the top of this, uh, of, this, of this screen. And the cool thing about it is that the audience is kind of around and above and everywhere. It's a very intimate performing space. And we do 
everything there uh, outside of the, the, the band stuff that Elliot uh, mentioned earlier. They have a separate building for the band. And of course, the, the football field is and, the, and the, the basketball court are also their venues. So uh, all of our jazz and classical choir stuff happens on the stage of Old Cabell. Um, which looks great with a single piano up there. But if you can imagine, we stuff our entire symphony orchestra on that very same stage. And I really do mean stuff them on. The percussion are kind of back in the wings and the basses are kind of behind that thing you, <laughs> where the seats come down. We somehow managed to do it. And then uh, an even better trick is when we have the choir in the back. And we've had collaborations uh, for Beethoven 9, for example, where we even had to build out the stage just a little bit into the audience in order to accommodate everybody. Uh, but for all of the discomfort of being crammed uh, onto a smaller stage, the experience for the audience is actually very singular. They, to be kind of looking down uh, through the violin section or through the viola section at the conductor, it's really, it's really, um, it's really special for them. And to be honest, it's special being on stage too, because you have you have this sense that you're kind of being embraced by your audience. And so uh, Old Cabell Hall is, is a really special building and uh, it's kind of the hub of most of our musical activity. Uh, if we advance to the next slide, uh, Elliot, would you talk about the Smith Band Building? It would be my pleasure. Um, so the band building at UVA is called the Hunter Smith Band Building. Um, we have been very fortunate to have a, a very philanthropic benefactor um, who really led the charge on this building um, coming to light about 10 years ago. Um, so Hunter Smith, through her uh, gracious gifts, um, has afforded us about 18,000 square feet um, dedicated to the Cavalier Marching Band as well as our concert ensembles. Um, if you look at the picture on the right, friends, you'll see um, through a lot of glass and you'll be able to see into our larger of the two rehearsal spaces. This is over 4,000 square feet of rehearsal space and multiple floors high. So if you are in, excuse me, um, multiple feet high. So if you are interested in performing as a color guard member um, with the marching band, it's actually possible for the color guard to, to practice tosses inside of our band room. Uh, so it's really impressive. Um, we also have a downstairs space, we'll say, that you obviously can't see here. Um, but my understanding is that students really use this as a social and communal hub uh, to connect uh, as well as to study, right? Because we know that students, first and foremost, are here uh, for academics. And our space affords students the opportunity um, to not only have a great band facility, but also a great study and communal space. Great, thank you. And uh, I should mention before we go on to the, the technology cluster that uh, in Old Cabell Hall, uh, we do also have practice rooms. I should have mentioned that uh, earlier, but there are practice rooms open to people uh, taking lessons and participating in ensembles. Uh, and so there are, from the outside of Old Cabell, if you look at it, it looks like a one, maybe two story building, uh, but it has several floors that, uh, that go below and then open to outside in the back. Uh, and there are teaching studios, a music library, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, many offices, and then practice rooms and rehearsal spaces. Uh, so let's move now to uh, the technology cluster. Ejan. Yes. Um, so at the very left, you can see that's our maker space. So you can create um, new, brand new instruments, or experimental mu uh, instrument at that space. And we also use that maker space for our double re faculty and, and their students to make re. They do some remaking also in that space. And then uh, in the middle, that's a uh, professor, Luke Dahl. Um, it's his space, it's a motion sensor space. So he, he composed, music with motion sensing. So I have been in the space, just playing snare drum, and then he's like recording how the movement with a stick in my hand and to create music that way. And also the right side, you can see uh, with a very nice speakers and 
a lot of the hardware. <coughs> That's our VCCM space, uh, the Virginia uh, Center for Computer Music Space, and is usually used by the Composition and Computer Technology program. Um, and so you get to learn how to record um, and make a different type of computer music in that space as well. So it actually connect to a, another glass and a space. So some people can play in that area and then you can record uh, through that space. Great, thank you, Ejen. And Lauren's gonna talk about our music library. Yeah, so the music library, you might have seen a, a small picture of it in the old Cabo Hall slide a couple of slides ago. This is actually located within old Cabo Hall in the basement. If you remember what the hall itself looks like, it's kind of underneath the seats. So we have this really cool sloped ceiling. The architecture is really, really fascinating. Um, but actually, this is a really fantastic resource um, and kind of a hidden gem of UVA. It's one of the most extensive music libraries on the East Coast. We have over 100,000 books and CDs and anything else related to music. Uh, we actually have so much material, so many materials that we are running out of space on the shelves. This is a real problem that we're having. So we are literally overflowing with resources for music students. Um, and this library is open not only to music majors, it's open to all students from across UVA. Um, if you're interested just in studying, you're not necessarily like looking to check anything out, this is a great place to do that too. It's, it's really um, a great kind of social hub as well as research hub. Um, and we will be opening for the fall semester, we'll be open on August 16th. So even if you're interested, just like popping in and seeing what it's, what it looks like, I'd really encourage you all to um, come check it out. Thank you, Lauren. And uh, John mentioned earlier, uh, Professor A.D. Carson, who's our professor of hip hop and the work that he's doing. Uh, John, do you wanna say a, just a couple words about the Rap Lab? Yes, and I have to say, um, I wish I knew more about it. And that's gonna be one of the projects coming back from COVID just to, for us all to be meeting again and doing things together. But the rap lab is a space that where they're really creating rap music. And A.D. Carson himself is a very accomplished spoken word artist. He actually wrote his, uh, his PhD dissertate, dissertation. It's a, it's a double CD of rap. And that's his dissertation. And I am a huge admirer of his um, language skills. He's amazing <clears throat> uh, in, in his... Um, ability to compose spoken word music, uh, spoken word language and so on. I was really taken when I did a workshop with him once uh, on rap music and he started the workshop by talking about Beowulf and the Icelandic sagas and it just went off in my head like a big bomb going, this is all the same. So that was very, very cool and He's just a very, I, I just know AD is a super approachable guy who is very, very into um, helping people find their own creative voice. And that's also a big theme here in general. So I'm excited about that. Thanks, John. So now we're gonna hear from the students more about uh, what it's like to be a student in the department uh, and at the university relating to music. So let's start with Julia. Sure. So in terms of a student experience, I think studying and or participating in music at UVA is wonderfully unique because it's a really well-rounded department, as you can see from all of the stuff that we've fit into the small time frame and we're probably missing stuff. <laughs> um, but most of the music students or artists that I know are either involved in more than one mode of performance or are studying other majors and minors while concurrently studying music. And so I think that results in a really great diversity of musical perspective and a great community of conversation and idea exchange. Um, it's been really beneficial to me as a musician who's looking into going into uh, music education in the future, um, because there are always opportunities to learn from others and teach others. Um, and I think it's a really great exchange of thought. And then something else that has been touched on a lot, but it's it rings true, is that all of the groups individually and communally form a really strong community through a shared love of music and a lot of rehearsal time together. I've recognized most of the faces on these slides. Um, it kind of helps to make a big university feel small. I came from a really small school. I was a little overwhelmed and then I joined the, the music community and I felt like I was at home. 
Um, in terms of university singers, just speaking from my experience, alumni of our group tend to stay connected for years after they graduate and to our conductor, uh, Professor Slan, Michael Slan, um, as well as other music professors. Um, so yeah, it's a really great community that extends far beyond graduation and far beyond just the academics or just the performance, um, which Lauren talked about with um, her violin group. But yeah, so that's all I got. Yeah, I'd be happy to go off of something Julia said, which is that, you know, a lot of us stay connected both to other students and faculty members, and that helps make this university seem a lot smaller. Something I really, really enjoy about the department is how small the class sizes are. You know, in my chemistry major, a lot of those classes are huge lecture halls. So to get that contrast with this department where the class sizes are usually no more than 20 students is really, really valuable to me. I'm someone who, who enjoys getting to know everyone in my class and enjoys getting to know the faculty really well. And so having that small class size really allows you to strengthen those connections and those bonds with other students and also with faculty. Um, Julia said that it feels like a home. It really does. It feels like a home. It feels like a family. Um, and, you know, I said this last week on the call, but every time I walk into the building, I usually spot someone that I know or like walking to, you know, a chemistry class, I see someone that I know. And it's, it really does make this university seem a lot smaller and a lot more intimate. And it just really strengthens those connections. And it, a lot of those interactions can make your day. And so I always look forward to going into the building and seeing who, who I'll run into that day. It's, it's really um, a treat to get to study at the um, music department. Yeah, everything they said is totally true. I guess another thing I could think of is like with the CMB, I had 40 friends before even move in weekend. And then just with all my small music classes, like even as a first year, even though I was in like a big like chemistry lecture. I was in like a small music seminar and I just got so many friends right from the start. Um, and it's really great working in the department also and just getting to know all the faculty more. Um, yeah, and I think the faculty is what's the most special about music department. Um, UVA has a lot of good professors, but yeah, music professors are some of the like nicest people I know, the most knowledgeable. Um, and I think it's a really nice balance from like hard chemistry classes or other things like that. I really like the balance that UVA music gives me. Thank you. I, I do wanna hear more from you guys soon about uh, volunteering and work opportunities. But before we leave this slide, um, you see at the bottom there are three, three little things, gigs, mailing lists, so students can, can opt to sign up for a mailing list that can provide some work opportunity in the in the arts. Um, so like playing playing quartets at a, at a function out at one of these venues outside of town, for example. Also, as a student, you pay into uh, some of your student fees pay into this thing called arts dollars, which allows you to attend a lot of arts events for free. You just have to sign up for tickets, I think, 24 hours in advance. So as you're getting to know what your uh, what your perks are of being a student here, please do check out Arts Dollars as well. So uh, Olivia, on the next slide, uh, I do want you to talk about community outreach, but would you also talk about some of the uh, volunteering and work opportunities? Yeah, I can do that. Um, yeah, so when I was a first year, um, I was ushering a lot, which was really fun. I got to meet a lot of students and a lot of just community members. Um, that loved ushering for like the symphony performances or like the jazz performances. And that was really fun. And then my second year, I started volunteering as a promotions assistant. Um, yeah, and it's just, it's great to meet so many people. I'm um, kind of get to know more about the department. Yeah, I feel like Lauren could probably add on a lot too. Let's hear from Julia first about the volunteer opportunities, then we can come back to work and do like a little work sandwich. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so as I said before, one of the best things about the department is that it extends beyond just the academics, just the performance, just the groups. And I really think it's geared towards serving Charlottesville as a city because they do so much for us as students. So we like to give back to them in an artistic way. Um, there are tons of service opportunities um, in terms of music. A lot of them are through Madison House, which is UVA's service hub. 
Um, in my experience, I worked with Professor Bonnie Gordon for this past year doing a music practice program, which is helping um, middle and high school musicians, budding musicians, um, keep up with their instruments and actually practice their music during COVID times. That's a program that's actually going to extend further um, into the coming year as things go back in person. And like I said, it's a really great opportunity if you want to be an educator um, to work with younger people in your instrument or sometimes not in your instrument. I worked with a cello player, even though I'm a violinist and we made it work and it was great <laughs> and I'll work with her again this coming year um, yeah but there are tons of opportunities they're very easy to find your professors will um, more likely than not be involved in them and bring them to your attention if you're in their classes which I think is absolutely wonderful so yeah yeah so now going back to actually working for the department um, as Olivia mentioned we both work as a promotions assistant um, which is really great just getting to connect with the greater Charlottesville community. Um, I also work at the music library. That's why I'm kind of like a big, big fan, big supporter. Um, and I've been working there for almost three years now. And something I've really, really valued over, um, about that job, sorry, there's a fire truck across the street from me. I'm sorry if you can hear it on the background. Um, but something I've really, really valued about that is the fact that I get to learn more about music on the job. Um, I get to be exposed to new musicians, new types of music new scores and such. And so that has just kind of expanded my musical knowledge more than I think any academic class could. Um, and something else that's great about that is, especially at the music library where it's so small, we get to have so many one-on-one -on -one interactions with patrons that you get to know the people who um, the library is servicing. And that includes community members and students and music faculty. So, you know, I'll get like odd requests at all hours of the day for like people to scan music or, you know, do you have this in stacks or anything like that? And it's, it's just such a great way to learn, um, you know, meet people and learn about people in a different capacity and, and see what they're interested in. And that holds true for pretty much all of the jobs you can hold within the department is kind of getting a different perspective into what making a music department tick is like. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, I'd really encourage you to check out the um, student jobs portion of our website um, or reach out to Olivia or myself and we can share more about our experience. Thanks you guys. So uh, we've, we've covered a lot of ground already and I, I want all of you uh, who are watching, this is your opportunity to start filling up that Q&A box. Uh, we'd love to answer anything that we haven't already about your particular interests. Uh, we, we have covered a lot of ground, haven't we? So we talked about the major, we talked about our facilities and our ensembles. Uh, but as you've kind of, you've learned, these are all very, very different kind of spider legs uh, into music that, that don't necessarily overlap. So if we have, haven't have touched on something uh, that you're particularly interested in, please do ask. Um, uh -huh. So Ejen, what do you mean about double major? Can you, can you ask that question of all of us, please? Yeah, um, I think the, like the students here, because they are like double major, so they can kind of talk about the experience of a double major here at UVA. Yeah, I could start. So as you guys saw earlier, the music major is only 31 credits, which is really only one to two classes per semester. You normally take four or five. So I find it really easy to add on the music major. Um, and then like I said before, I also find it just like such a good balance to the science classes. I think it like makes me better at both that I do both. Um, yeah. Lauren, what do you think? Yeah, just to echo that, I think, you know, you, especially with STEM courses, they're pretty intense. There's a lot of work involved and you can kind of get a little bit overwhelmed trying to balance all of that. And so I've found similarly to Olivia that although kind of on paper, it seems like adding on a music major would make you more stressed. I've found that in many, in many ways, it's the opposite where I really look forward to like going to rehearsals because that's kind of time spent with my friends or, you know, going to a concert as part of my major. That's also another way that I can kind of get a break from my 
more rigorous courses while also getting credit for them. And just to put that music major number of credits into perspective, the, the chem BA major is I think like 50 or 60 credits and the BS major is 71 credits. And I am still able to balance the BS major with my music major. It's, it's totally possible. And um, it's uh, like Olivia and I have both said, it's a great way to get some more balance and some more variety into your academic classes. Thanks. And I will say very briefly, uh, sometimes students will, I'll see them in chamber music and I'll see them taking lessons and I'll see them in the orchestra. And then I'll talk to them and they're like the end of their first year. I say, uh, what are you majoring in? They're, they don't, they have no idea. And the second year, what are you majoring in? Because you've taken a lot of music classes, you know, so that some of them discover kind of by accident that they've done you know, a lot of the requirements are ready for a music major. And then at that point, it's not, it's not too late yet to add the music major and still complete it. Uh, there are a couple questions in the, uh, the chat now. So what are some of the differences between singing with university singers or chamber singers versus a club? Are there more benefits to doing it through the music department? Julia, do you wanna handle that one? Yeah, sorry, I didn't see that one. Thank you for sending that my way. Um, yes, so I am involved in university and uh, chamber singers and also musical clubs. So um, university and chamber singers is a uh, part of the department. So you are receiving all of the benefits that a department group gets, mainly an assurance of spaces. You don't have to book your own spaces. You don't have to plan your own concerts. The department helps you with promotion and funding and all of these things. Um, on the flip side, performing in a student group gives you a little bit more freedom to do whatever the students want to do. Um, and there are professors that will work with you if you approach them um, with certain projects, um, but both have its benefits, I think. Um, I would say that the department groups are typically a little bit bigger, um, mainly because they've been around for longer. Uh, university singers, over 50 years, I believe. Um, so we have a lot of community members coming and expecting our concerts every year. Um, and we collaborate with groups while student groups tend to just work individually. Um, hope I'm not overstepping by saying that, um, but yes. Thank you. Uh, there's a question about job opportunities in the recording studio. John, do you have any idea about that one? I don't, but I do know that most of these programs have a student worker attached to them. So I know for the jazz ensemble, for instance, we are allowed a student worker and we you know, beg someone to do that job. It's great because they, they actually make dough, you know, pretty good money doing this and helping us. So I don't know if specifically there is one related to the recording studio. I guess you're talking about the recording studio in the rap lab or in the, in the composer's lair doesn't specify, I'm not sure, John. Because we have, a. what I'm learning myself is we have recording studios in various quarters around the university for various purposes. There's even a student run um, record company, I believe here, O Records. Hi, can I just jump in here? Yeah, please, Mar Marcy. Old Jacobus does have concert recorders that record every concert in Old Cabo Hall. Well, that's true, yeah. Um, workers now and so you can go to that student jobs page and find information about that I don't know about the recording studios themselves but we can find out for you if, if you just write music at thejane.edu thanks Marcy that was Marcy Day everybody the well, legend herself <laughs> yes she is a legend uh, the, boss. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the boss of us the pope of us there there is a question about the, the uh, rap lab. Uh, you know, I, as John mentioned, Professor A.D. Carson is entirely approachable. I would, I would send Professor Carson an email. If you're interested at all about the rap lab, how to access it, how to get involved, uh, he would welcome that email. I would just shoot him a quick, quick note. There's another question uh, about the audition process for first years. And what, would, what did you wish you had known going in? So that's for singing particularly. So Julia, could you, could you just, let's use uh, university singers as an example. Walk us through like audition week for that. 
Sure, great. So for university singers, um, you do not have to pair, prepare anything ahead of time, as opposed to um, some of the instrumental ensembles. You may want to do your scales and warm up after a year and a half of not singing, um, but you're going to go in, you're going to be one on one with Professor Slan to start, um, and he's going to walk you through a series of exercises just to test your range, very simple, very approachable. Um, and then some sight singing, which always causes uh, the most anxiety, but <laughs> it is not a deal breaker. Um, this is a group that you can learn and grow in. Um, and so it's just kind of to gauge where you are in terms of uh, musical education. And then he'll probably ask you to sing um, a folk song, a popular song, like my country tis of thee. If you don't know that one, students have sung happy birthday before. <laughs> um, and then after that, you will go. And um, if you've moved on to the next stage of auditions, you'll be invited to callbacks where you will be invited by section that you're being called back for to sing in an octet of existing singers. You'll learn um, a particular choral piece, depending on your vocal part, um, sing it through a few times, and then you'll sing it with the group to see how you blend um, with the other singers. Um, if you're considering chamber singers, that is a separate process. Um, if you are a first year or new to the group, you will probably have to audition for university singers first and then uh, move on to chamber, unless it's a special case. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Like I said, very approachable. Everyone wants you to get in. <laughs> I think you could say the same for the instrumental groups, but yeah. Yeah, thank you, Julie. I would say, look, there. everybody who's listening to your auditions will have also auditioned in their lifetime many more times, right? And so you will find no uh, more sympathetic crowd than the people you're auditioning for. We've all been there. Um, but I would say, you know, having participated in audition circumstances in a lot of different uh, schools and in different settings, the, the atmosphere at UVA is, is not at all hostile. It's not intimidating, uh, even for the most rigorous, uh, what you might call the most rigorous audition processes like this callback process or for the symphony where you have to prepare excerpts. Even there, we, we are excited that you're coming uh, to play for us and we'll talk with you. It's, it's um, we just want to get to know you and want to want to know how you play the instrument. Um, similarly, uh, you know, if you've looked into lessons or th something that says permission uh, required or instructor permission required, what that is is, you know, depending on the studio, some studios are overwhelmed with requests, so you can probably guess which ones. Piano is a very popular instrument. Uh, violin, flute. There, there are a handful that that always have more uh, requests than than any faculty member could logically handle. And so, in those cases, we, the the professors just want to meet with students, kind of gauge their interests, gauge their level. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to be the most talented or most prepared. Um, we're not, we're not that kind of a school. We're not just cherry picking the the very best students and ignoring the rest. We really do care about people who are interested in learning uh, the instrument or the voice. So uh, speaking from my own experience, I really enjoy hearing from third and fourth years who, who communicate to me that all their life, all their life, they wanted to learn how to play the violin and have never had the opportunity. Could they please come and study? Uh, I, I think it's charming, I really do, because I can tell they're excited. These are, you all are smart, smart students and when you're interested and have the work ethic to back it up you can actually learn how to play one of those instruments before you leave UVA which is really cool and if you looked at that list of uh, instruments available to study for private lessons it even includes things like Chapman stick which you may or may not have ever heard of right we have a very broad offering so if you've ever been curious about learning a new instrument uh, now is the time you can get credit you can get university credit for doing that um, so I hope that puts your minds at ease a little bit about like these audition and, re and permission requirements. John, yeah. Yeah, I'd just love to jump in on what you guys have been saying about the audition process and just make an observation. A famous musician I knew once said, the person who gets the gig is the person who had the most fun at the audition. And the trick is to not to come in with a prepared piece necessarily or something that is going to just knock somebody's socks off because you've worked on it so much, rather to come in at your most comfortable and conditioned. As Julia said, you know, you might want to go through a few scales and warm up a little bit after a year and a half of COVID. But if you're a jazz player to come in, just know your scales, play your horn, love your instrument, and you will find a place here to play music. 
and like you heard the student was saying like the professor are very approachable so don't afraid to email us please do and i yeah. really we really like to hear from you and we love the student and faculty <clears throat> interaction so we really want to get to know you in a personal level as well so Thank you, Ejen. So we're at time and the questions have all been answered in the chat, uh, but please do, if you uh, felt like you had a question and were embarrassed to ask it, just, just send uh, an individual instructor that email or our generic uh, uh, music email that gets fielded and gets directed to the right person. Thank you all for coming. Thank you to the panelists up on the screen. You all are wonderful. Um, I hope you enjoyed the rest of your summer, which is, there aren't that many weeks remaining in that summer, but uh, I hope you enjoy it and we look forward to meeting you come the fall. Thank you so much.